Hello, welcome to another Action Figure Adventures video. Today, Baby Skeletor and I are taking a look at two more figures from the G.I. Joe Collector's Club Subscription 3. We have Viper and Spearhead and Max. Here's a closer shot of the two figures in the package. Both of these figures have fairly new looking card art. Uh, all figures in this line have had updates to their card art, but Spearhead and Max's doesn't really look too much like their vintage figure. And Viper's is very new because her vintage figure card art was her in a vehicle, so it was just kind of her head. So this is pretty much all new there for her. There's a shot of the back of the package where you can see the larger version of their card art as well as their file cards. And here you can see their figures 5 and 6 of subscription version 3.0. Alright, here's Spearhead and Viper out of the package. I gotta start by saying that Spearhead was one of the figures I wanted the most out of this subscription service, and Viper was one of the ones I wanted the least. So with that in mind while I'm reviewing them, let's take a closer look. Spearhead here is decked out with a ton of equipment. He's got three different guns. He's got a knife that I tucked in his belt there. He's got the bullet strap going around him. That's actually removable. Uh, it's rubber banded on, and I will never remove it because it's never going to go back on the way it is now, I'm sure. He's got a removable helmet as well as a backpack. And then, of course, his Bobcat Max. Viper over here has a gun a sheath with two swords in it, and a briefcase that contains a little computer and another gun. Spearhead was a childhood favorite of mine from the G.I. Joe line, even though he had kind of goofy looking orange camo. I'm glad they muted that orange a little bit here, but did keep it to keep him true to the figure. Um, the original character just had a neat desert feel to him, and came out, you know, when we were around the Desert Storm era, so it just was a cool, cool figure in my mind. And he had some really great details. And they brought a lot of them into this figure. The sad thing is, I think out of all the figures I've gotten so far in the subscription, I'm the most disappointed with him. Maybe I had my standards set too high, but I'm not sure. For one thing, he's super floppy. I've never had a figure like this wobble at the waist, like Spearhead. Second, his backpack doesn't stay on hardly at all. It's pegged in over the bullets through his vest and into the back of him, and it just doesn't really line up and stay on real well. It just sort of sits there and falls off really easy. Spearhead's helmet is very nicely detailed. It's got little wrinkles and straps and things on it, as well as the camo pattern. He comes with this awesome update of his original gun, which is one of my favorite G.I. Joe accessories of all times. As a kid, I loved this gun. It's got the knife. On the end is a bayonet, it's got the shoulder strap, it just looks super cool. And I always really liked this gun with the version of Sergeant Slaughter that came with the Warthog vehicle. That was just the coolest combination of figure and accessory in my mind as a kid. He also has this gun that can work with the bullets if you unstrap them from around him. He's got this gun. He also comes with this little knife that isn't anywhere near as cool as the knife that the original figure came with. He's got a backpack here with the G.I. Joe movie logo on it and the new version of Max. This Spearhead and Max was originally released by the club in their Night Force colors, so this is the first time we've seen him painted up in a more normal version. He's a pretty cool figure. I wish maybe he was, it wasn't quite so straight. Uh, he's, he's very much um, flat looking, but he's got great sculpted detail and I do like the spots painted on him. So it's a pretty cool update of that wild bobcat. The original Viper was released in the late 90s as part of the G.I. Joe rebirth that they tried at Toys R Us in 97. And she was made from a Jinx figure, so she had a ninja appearance to her, but she drove a Cobra Jeep. This figure is based off the updated Jinx figure, which I'm not really a huge fan of, and that's part of the reason why I don't really like this figure, um, or wasn't really excited about her. She is a nice update. She's in pretty much all dark blue with some black details. She has a silver Cobra logo there. But, you know, she's not too terribly exciting, in my opinion. She comes with this sheath with two swords, and the original one did come with Jinx's weapons, which was a sword, or two swords and a backpack. She has a really nice machine gun here, and since she's listed as a Cobra Courier, she has this briefcase. And we've seen this briefcase before in the line uh, with, 21st, with 25th anniversary figures, but it is a pretty cool briefcase, considering the fact that it has a gun inside it and a little computer screen. I don't have the vintage figure to compare. I think that one had sort of a bluish-grayish fade going on in the uniform that this one lacks. 
but it's still a nice update. Here you can see the vintage spearhead with the new updated one. They are very similar. I do like the dark details that this guy has. It really kind of brings out some of the details a little bit nicer than the almost completely plain tan torso of the original. One of the biggest problems with the original figure was that his helmet never fit right, so I do like that they corrected that on the new one. You can see the gun is almost identical, and here's that really awesome machete the vintage one came with that uh, too bad they couldn't pack that in with him. Here's his, the vintage one's backpack, which was just kind of plain and orange. Uh, you know, so the replacement backpack they sent with him is fine. And down below, you can see the two different versions of Max. I do think the new one looks more like a Bobcat than the original. Um, but I feel like the wide stance of this one made it a little bit more fun to play with, maybe, than this guy who seems like he's ready to tip over all the time. Although he, he stays up pretty well for me. So, uh, who am I to complain, I guess? So this installment of the subscription service ended up being a little bit of a dud for me. Just mainly because Viper just isn't that interesting to me, and Spearhead... I think I just had my hopes set too high for the perfect figure. Uh, I really do like the way they sculpt details with the added vests and things like that on the modern figures, but they tend to end up being clunky and bulky, and with the straps on top of the vest and the backpack not really fitting, it just kind of rubbed me the wrong way a little bit. But he does look cool. Uh, I think he displays really well. But I just wonder if anybody else is, is wobbly like that. And maybe you can't tell in the video, but there's no shake in this one. And there's all kinds of wobble in this guy. So if you happen to get these figures and your spearhead also wobbles or doesn't wobble, leave me a comment below because I would love to know whether this is just something happened with mine or if it was a problem with a lot of the figures. This has been an Action Figure Adventures video. Do Baby Skeletor a favor, hit that like and subscribe button.